Hey everybody, Jay Davis, the Gaming Gaijin here. You'll have to forgive my voice, I've been sick the past few days, but I've got a drink here. I'm trying to keep myself hydrated. I realize it's been a while since I posted any videos on here, but the other day, one of the podcasts I listened to, The Retro League, that's theretroleague.com, uh, one of the hosts of that podcast, Hughes, posted on their forums that he had a box of retro game stuff that in his words, weren't even worth giving away in their monthly fan of the month giveaways. And the first person to send him a PM with the, their address, he'd send that box too. No charge, anything. Good guy. So, I got there first. He sent it's a rather large box, larger than I was expecting. It is a large flat rate box from the Postal Service. It just packed to the brim with games. Not necessarily good games, but games and free. So, meh. so here I am making a video to show y'all what I got. I uh, dumped all of them in a laundry basket here, kind of mixed them up so I can just grab one at random and show you. I didn't put that much forethought into this, so I haven't really tried to play any of these games or even read up on any of them. So this will just be kind of off the cuff. Whatever I think to say about them. And again, I'm not feeling all well, so. First thing, and the one thing that I'm not putting in and mixing in a random Nintendo 64! Oh my god! Nintendo 64 kids impersonations aside, yeah, the Nintendo 64, no cables, does have the jumper pack, not the expansion pack, just the plain old jumper pack. But, haven't tested it to see if it works. Assuming it works, I'll probably try to get some trade-in credit for it. Probably won't get too much without the cables. I mean, the video cable is easy to replace, but I don't know that anybody's making replacement N64 power cords. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Anything that I do try to trade in at my local GameStop, GameStop, it's not a GameStop, Game Shop. I'm not editing this video, by the way. I'm too sick to care. Anything I do try to trade in at my local retro game place here in town, or if I, stuff that I have to go out of town to trade in, I will put like a YouTube annotation somewhere to say what I got, etc. But like I said, I'm not editing this video. I'm not in a mood to care because the glim and the whoop, flat, all the stuff going on in my head. Let's get on to the games! First game at random. Tommy Lasorda Baseball for the Sega Genesis. I don't even know who this is. I don't know anything about sports. A lot of these are sports games. So, baseball. That's a... Troy Aikman football for the Super Nintendo. I do know who I do know I do know who Troy Aikman is. I grew up in Dallas. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't. But football. I sound I'm, I sound very much not enthused because of my voice being from the city. Next up, World Championship Soccer Two for the Sega Genesis. Soccer, or football, depending on your region. But we're in America. It's soccer in America. We don't like it. Uh, next up. Yeah, not a sports game. Strike Gunner STG for the Super Nintendo. Looks like some kind of shmup. I'm not familiar with it. The planes on the front look... Like military fighter jets, but they're in space. And it's got some sticker gunk on it. But this one, I'll probably you know, give it a try, see if I like it. May actually stay in the collection. Let's, uh, okay, let's get this one out of the way. Is this the only kind of modern game in here? High Rollers Casino for the PlayStation 2. Not probably worth the plastic it's printed on, but... I don't mean to sound ungrateful with these comments. It's free stuff. I am grateful for free stuff, even if it's not anything worthwhile. 
head for the left. I was not laughing because that would hurt my throat. I can't. Ken Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball for the Super Nintendo. That man has a terrible signature. Look at that signature. I can't make that out at all. K. Gugger Baseball. Okay, let's get this one out of the way, too. The oldest item in here, and besides the PlayStation 2 game, the only thing in a box. Television, poker, and blackjack. Very much along the same lines, except worse, because it's in television, poker, and blackjack. There's no manual, no overlay. There's the cart. It's just in there. I don't own an Intellivision. I do have Intellivision Lives for the original Xbox, which this is on. I did check that much. So I'm not even sure if I have anywhere I can trade that in. Next up, we have John Madden Football, NEA, SN, whatever, for the Super Nintendo. Not even a year on this Madden Football, so I don't even know what year. What would that be, like 92? I don't know when they started making When they started making Madden Footballs. It says copyright 1991. On the back sticker, but who knows how accurate that is. But John Madden football. Okay, my hand went straight to this. One of the well, I said that in television one was the only one in the box. I forgot the Genesis cases. I'm counting cases and boxes are different things, kind of. But then I called the PS2 game box. I don't know. Go to the sounds. I've, there's a rabbit down here. Let's make these sounds. Anyway, NCAA football for the Sega Genesis, which is in a case. It looks like an EA case, but it's not an EA game. So, it's more football. It's college football, also with no year on it. Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt for the NES. Yay! It used to belong to Chris Manzardo. Chris Manzardo. Like to play the Mario and the Duck Hunt. Next up, we have NBA All Star Challenge for the Sega Genesis by Flying Edge and copyright acclaimed sports. Like I said, a lot of sports. Games. Next up is NBA Live 97 for the Super Nintendo. Base baseball, basketball. Basketball. I like basketball. It's actually a funny movie. Okay. This one, I don't know why it's in here. I haven't tried to play it, obviously, but it's in good shape. It's not a sports game. It's a game I don't have in my collection, so it's definitely going into my collection, assuming it works, which I haven't tested. But it is Ghouls and Ghosts for the Sega Genesis. Now, I have Ghosts and Goblins on the NES, which is good, except for it's a little clunkily programmed because Capcom outsourced it. And I have Super Ghouls and Ghosts for the Super Nintendo, so I actually kind of needed this one. So, then I don't have much to say on it. We're past the nine minute mark now, and I still have a bunch of games in this basket. Afterburner 2 for the Sega Genesis, with a torn label. But Afterburner 2 is actually. It's been a while since I played it, but I remember liking it. So. I might keep this one at least until I find a copy with a better label. So. So we have. Castle Quest for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It also, not unlike the A, what was it, STG for the Super Nintendo way earlier in the video, it's got some sticker gunk on the label. That probably won't come off very easy. It's got some stuff of some sort up and down the grill stuff here and on the back. Yeah, that grill. But I don't know too much about the Castle Quest game. 
or game if it's only one. Uh, it's by Nexoft. I assume it's some sort of RPG type game, but I don't know. I'll have to play it and see what I think. I'm definitely cleaning it up. Yeah. Next up, this one confused me when I pulled it out of the box originally. You'll see it's you see it's a Super Nintendo cartridge. You'll see it's black. So my initial thought was Killer Instinct. Is there a Killer Instinct cartridge in here? No, it is Firepower 2000 by Sunsoft. So my initial thought after that was, wait, they made a different black cartridge game besides Killer Instinct? I'm sure there is one besides one Killer Instinct that I'm aware of. There might be one. I'm not sure I'm going to get a comment. Of course, there's another black Super Nintendo, blah, 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 blah. But no, this is not actually a black Super Nintendo cartridge. Somebody just decided to take a Sharpie to the majority of it. You can see the gray around the label. You can see the gray in here. The bottom is still all gray. And it apparently used to belong to Budget Game Club. New or used systems and games. It's got a 313 area code. There's no address, but it's 313 area code. I don't even know where that is. And there's actually a piece of paper taped to the back of it with level select codes for this game. Which are all R and L, apparently. So, I don't know. I'll have to see what I can do with that. It may be a decent game, and I may be able to clean that off. But it'll take a lot of work. And I'll probably ruin the label in the process. And the back thing is probably not gonna be salvageable with all that stuff taped to it. But moving on, well, I guess I'll go ahead and grab the other taste Genesis game in here. Pinocchio for the Sega Genesis. I don't know if this game is supposed to be good or not. I mean, Disney games on the 16-bit game systems were kind of hit and miss. Capcom ones were good, but they were mostly on the 8-bit systems. And then we got to the 16-bit stuff. Disney started out going to different studios and stuff. And you, see, you get great games like most of the Mickey Mouse games, and then you get terrible games like Fantasia. I don't know if Pinocchio is supposed to be good or not. It does have the manual in here. The manual is in steam condition. Looks like it. Very nice. Cartridge is in good shape. They didn't get very creative with the cartridge, it's just kind of white with Pinocchio and Pinocchio and technically two too many crickets because he's in the, the logo and he's on Pinocchio's foot. So, but I don't know. I'll give it a try. If I like it, then, you know, it'll stay in my collection. But, 